Yeah, so it's fall break, and um, you know, just piggybacking off of that right there with our Paul journey. We've got two two events, uh, one yesterday, one today, and always good to see our guys come back yesterday with Andre Branch and Jarvis Jenkins uh, here, uh, along with Dalton Freeman and Courtney Brown. Uh, they did a really good job, you know, kind of our uh, uh, NFL transition uh, type, and then today's what we call ball to bag, and uh, we got another great group coming in here today. So fun to see those guys uh, and uh, spend some time with them yesterday. But as far as, uh, you know, where we are right now, obviously coming off a very tough weekend, um, you know, difficult weekend. But, you know, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm proud of our guys. Uh, hey, we won 14 in a row, and, uh, you know, uh, it's hard to do. And it didn't go our way the other night. Uh, give Notre Dame credit again for that. Uh, certainly very, very disappointing because uh, we, we definitely missed an opportunity for sure. Um, uh, but, you know, uh, proud of the guys that have been a part of this for the, uh, over two two seasons here to win 14 in a row. I think that's the third longest streak in the history of our school. Uh, we've had another one 17 in a row, 29 in a row, you know, and, and we've had those streaks because we've just responded and we've always gone back to work. And uh, so good news is uh, we missed an opportunity, but we got another opportunity this week. And that's 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 the good news for us. Also, we're a better team. Certainly, than what we played the other night, uh, we're eight and one, not five and three. And uh, every goal, every goal we have is intact. There's, there's, you know, our goals are simple, and uh, they, they're they're very simple. And uh, it, it, every time we've hit all those goals, we've either won the national championship uh, or we've had some kind of, you know, amazing year. And uh, so there's not anything uh, that that we strive for every single year that's that's. Uh, not attainable to this team. Uh, we, we've won the opener. Um, we, we can win the division. Uh, we can still win this state championship. <clears throat> uh, we can still win this league. And we can still win the closer. So there's not anything. There's only one thing that's, that's uh, uh, you know, off the table for us, and that's being undefeated. You know, that ain't going to happen. Uh, but, you know, there's very few teams that, you know, can, are ever undefeated. There's been one in the NFL since 1972, and I think there's only been six in 10 years uh, in, in, the, in the college football. Uh, it's hard, and we've been one of them. It's hard to do. It's hard to win every game. You want to win every game. Don't want everyone to lose. Uh, but man, it's uh, you know all about responding and, and just you know getting back to work. And that's what our guys did. Is a, a tough couple of days. Um, and uh, you know our our job. You know when when we fail, we fail in front of the world, and there, there's there's that's a tough tough thing, uh, especially when you're dealing with young people. <clears throat> so it was a long Sunday and a long day yesterday. Uh, mental Monday, get your mind right. Uh, let's let's uh, uh, refocus. You know, again with the right perspective, take ownership, learn from it, and let's grow from it, and then you get back to work. That's what that's what winners do. That's what competitors do and again that's why we've been so consistent and, and successful around here for a long time uh, and and you respond and I, I loved how our guys responded uh, yesterday and staff on Sunday so uh, again back to work and again another opportunity this week <clears throat> and another big challenge it's a good football team uh, that we're getting ready to play uh, these guys um, they're fast physical team uh, they're a veteran team on both sides of the ball. Uh, seems like we're playing a lot of those uh, type teams. And uh, they've won four in a row, so they're really confident. It's a confident bunch. Uh, they've, they've, they've got three losses, uh, but winning makes you forget about that, you know, quickly. Uh, you can even look at the national scene. you got people on the national scene with some really bad losses, but people forget about those things uh, when you win. So. Winning is, is is a key thing, and these guys are very confident because they put four good ones in a row together, and uh, they're playing well offensively. They're balanced. They're explosive. Um, this quarterback is special. He's he's a he's a very dynamic player. I mean, he's he's a, he's a problem, um, and just a guy I got a lot of respect for. He's a great competitor. Three really good running backs, just like last week. Very veteran offensive line. Good receivers. Another good tight end. Uh, but I think the balance that they have creates the explosiveness, uh, especially with the quarterback, you know, running the show back there. Veteran guy uh, that, that obviously is, again, really, really dangerous. And then defensively, uh, very aggressive, uh, you know, veteran group, second in the nation in sacks. I think they're, uh, uh, you know, right there 
in the top 10 or so in TFLs. Uh, they're uh, second in the nation in takeaways, uh, or maybe lead the nation at this point. They've got a bunch of, bunch of turnovers that they've created. So it's a good football team, and, and uh, for us, definitely have to uh, get back on track. Number one thing for us, we've got to take care of the ball. Uh, <clears throat> there's, that's just first and foremost. You know, that's the... That's the number one thing in our plan to win. And, you know, we did a really good job of that for seven games. We had three turnovers in seven games, and we've had six in two. Uh, so, uh, you know, not real complicated. Uh, you're going to struggle when you, when you, when you do that, uh, and you're going to miss a lot of opportunities. So we've got we've to correct that first and foremost, get back on track, uh, and then, uh, you know, just respond respond in all 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 areas uh you know like a good team does and that's the expectation again last time we lost a game uh we went on a 14 game winning streak and uh unfortunately that ended uh, the other night so uh the goal is to try to start another one uh, on saturday and it's, it'll be a great day 330 game military appreciation always a special time and uh look forward to to uh another opportunity <clears throat> Questions? In assessing the game and, and, and the obvious things you mentioned afterward, but just kind of looking at the film, were there some things that you saw that just further jumped out of you about the lack of execution or just, just physically got our butts kicked? It's real simple. You know, it is. They, they just we we didn't we did we did a lot of technical things wrong too, but didn't take care of the ball. Uh, they block a punt on the opening possession. You know, on a, the most basic thing that you could ask. And uh, we don't do it. And momentum, turnovers, uh, you know, you know it's, it's hard to turn that in, uh, on the road, you know. And, again, I'm proud of our guys, though. I mean, listen, we what four and one on the road this year. Uh, we didn't go undefeated on the road. We gave it all we had. We had a bad night. Uh, but we, you know, we're four and one on the road. Uh, and we're eight and one on the season. So uh, that was a – one to forget, and the good news is, is we know we're better than that. Uh, but we did not play well, and uh, we didn't do we didn't do much well at all. But they just, you know, played better, coached better, physically uh, won the game, and uh, we did not just didn't do what we needed to do. And a lot of missed opportunities, big missed opportunity, but that one's over. It's about this one coming forward. You went into the Notre Dame game saying DJ is my guy, <clears throat> plays best game, Syracuse. Hiccup. How do you frame the quarterback situation now uh, that you have another 60 minutes of? Yeah, yeah. Well, he 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 played his worst game against Syracuse for sure, and uh, it was and it was a really and he's he played well up to that. He'd had a, he's played well. I mean, again, he, the reality is we won 14 in a row. He was starting quarterback for every single one of them, and uh, he's 19 and five as a starter. You know, so uh, he he's he's he had a really his worst game. And he did not play well at Notre Dame. He played better, but he didn't play well. Uh, but he can't punt protect, and he don't stop the run. And uh, But I do like how he finished the game. I loved how he finished the game. I love how he competed. And that's why that's why the team loves him, uh, because that's who he is. And so, but he's got to play. I mean, he'd be the first one to tell you. I mean, he's 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 got to play better. And uh, he's got to get back on track to how he played the first seven games. And, uh, you know, that's just the reality of the situation. I mean, uh, he's got to be accountable to that. He is. And uh, he watched every play with him, and he knows what he's got to do better. And, and you know, if he doesn't play better, then you you, you got to give somebody else a, a chance. That's just where we are. But, uh, you know, that's this is always real time, you know, as you move forward. Does, or is it something where you feel like maybe Kate needs to get more? Yeah, we, we, we need to get Cade some more opportunity. You know, he hasn't really had a lot of opportunity. Uh, you know, we've put him in in some, you know, tough situations from time to time. He hadn't had, you know, and it was, that was a tough spot, though. And that's a tough play, you know, uh, and, and uh, you know, a mistake he'll learn from. You know, he's got a guy in the flat. You either throw it to the guy in the flat or you throw it away right there. But, uh, you know, just, uh, uh, a young guy that'll learn, but we definitely, you know, got a lot of confidence in him. He's a great young player, and uh, but again, uh, when you've won 14 in a row and and you've got a guy that is your leader and and is, has played well, and then all of a sudden, you know, he had a bad game. You know, you you 
you, you don't panic. You know, you keep moving. And now, now this past week, uh, he didn't play bad, but he didn't play well. And uh, we need him to play well. So that's kind of where we are. Uh, so it would be a it'd be a, a big day on Saturday for all of us because we all need to get back. We need to coach well, and we all need to play well. It's not just DJ. It's everybody. Got to get back on track, see if we can get to 91. The only thing worse than 8-1 is 8-2. Uh, so we want to we want to get to 91 and see if we can get back on track and and uh, be who I know we are and and uh, do some of the things that that I've seen you know throughout the year. You said that Monday was going to be a really big day. Cause you just wanted to see the look in their eyes. I guess what did you see yesterday? Hurt, hurt group, a mad group, disappointed, complete ownership. You know, uh, saw what I wanted to see. You know, and uh, it's good. And, you know, so now it's about us as coaches helping them uh, have the right perspective, you know, uh, especially at a place like Clemson. I mean, I mean, and, and you, I mean, as I said yesterday, I mean, the team that just beat us, Notre Dame, I mean, they got, you know, they lost their first two games. There's a lot, probably a lot of criticism, a lot of disappointment, right? A lot of, you know, they, but they went back to work. And you respond, and you and you get better. Now they've won six out of seven, and they're but they still got three losses. I mean, Oregon lost by 46 points. Now they go, they talking about being in the playoff. Well, they responded, you know. So that's what good teams do. That's what good coaches do. LSU, you know, they 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 lost to Florida State. We beat Florida State, you know, at their place. You know that happened. You know, they got blown out at home by Tennessee, but now they're one of the better teams in the country. LSU, right? I think that's what good teams do. That's what good staffs do. You respond, you know, and you don't think there's some criticism in a place like LSU or Notre Dame or, you know, absolutely. There's disappointment, but you, you have to have the right perspective as you go back to work because if you don't, then those bad moments define you. Uh, and you can't let it do that. You've got you to gotta let it develop you into what you're, what, you're, what you're capable of being as a team and as, a, as an individual player, and that's what good teams do. So it hurts because we went 10 weeks without a loss. Right? I mean, there's only four undefeated teams, and we made it to week 10. And we had a bad day. We won 14 in a row. Uh, you know, and so nobody wins every game, nobody, uh, forever. So when you have a, a moment like that, you regroup. You make sure you got the right perspective, because if you don't, and, and, and you know, the, the, these kids today, the world can get in them and just, you know, paralyze them because uh, it's so much – negativity and, and criticism and things like that and that comes with it um, so you got to help them have the right perspective as they get back to work and uh, you know continue to instill that belief and you know and have some fun doing it you know you can't you can't let things steal your joy um, you just can't I mean that's it's, I think there and I think there's too many people in this profession coaches and players that that allow that you know, their joy is defined by what happens on a scoreboard. And I, I think that's that's just not a good thing. It's not healthy uh, for anyone. And, uh, you know, my joy is not defined by that. Uh, I love what I do. I love these guys. I love this team. And, and uh, you know, you know, I, 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 my joy is in just doing what I do. And, you know, I hurt and they hurt, but you can't let the, you can't let the hurt be greater than the hope. All right, you gotta, you know, it's a new day. You wake up. I mean, we all we all have challenges. We all have setbacks. We all have disappointment, right? And you go back to work. I watched Dusty Baker. I was telling Quark last night. I watched Dusty Baker uh, win the World Series, and how cool was that? Got 73 years old. He he. How many how many disappointing moments did he have? How many? He's he's probably been fired a couple times, right? And you know. He, how many World Series did he coach in that he didn't win? How many playoff games did he coach in that he didn't win? How many, you know, but you know why he won the World Series? Because he went back to work. Just kept going back to work. And that's what winners do. Uh, you know, it's not that uh, any great winner that you see, it's not that they haven't had disappointment along the way. It's just how they how they re react to it and how they respond to it, you know. And, again, you, you, if you're made of the right stuff, it makes you better. Um, we've had one undefeated team since I've been the head coach. That's it. So I just think we're at a place now where you lose a game and 
people lose their minds, uh, absolutely lose their minds, and they lose all their joy, and they, they hate everybody, and you need to fire everybody, and you need to get rid of every player. And, and it's such a negative thing that's been created with this world of social media, and it's sad. Uh, and and I, I don't buy into that, you know. Um, and I don't grow weary. You know, I grow stronger. The Bible says that, you know, Galatians 6, 9 says, do not grow weary from doing what is right and good, for at the appropriate time you'll reap a harvest of blessing if you don't give up. You know, that's a, that's a big thing, and I, I've lived that my whole life. I don't grow weary. I grow stronger. Uh, so, um, you know, I'm excited about having a good Tuesday practice today, and uh, ain't nothing going to steal my joy, and I'm going to do everything I can to not let the joy be taken out of it for this football team. And if people can't get on board with that, then they're, they're missing a lot of opportunity. If you're only going to be happy if we win the national championship, you're going to spend a lot of years down in the dumps, in the gutter. They went 35 years without winning one here. And, uh, you know, you're missing out on a lot of funds, all I can tell you. Um, you know, I know this. We, we are uh, we're changing a lot of lives through what we do here. And, you know, just – Sit, standing here yesterday with Jarvis and Dalton and Andre Branch and Courtney, it's just confirmation for me. It was just almost like a blessing being able to spend some time with him yesterday on a day like that uh, and a reminder of, you know, what it's all about. And, uh, man, never losing perspective of that and never losing your joy in that, you know. Uh, you know, just we talked and had such a – it was fun because those guys were a part of that first ACC championship team in 11. And we did something hadn't been done in 20 years here. and. And now it's it's like you know, uh, that's that's not fun anymore. And uh, man, I just we got to we got to enjoy what we're doing. And I think it's important for me as the leader of this program and these young souls and hearts that are in front of me to make sure that that we help them take ownership. That we all take ownership, but learn and grow, and keep striving. Uh, and because uh, you know it's uh, it's fun, it's fun. And uh, again, good news is it wasn't the end of our season. You know, sometimes you lose a game, and you got to wait till next year to play. We we get to play again this Saturday, and we get to play in the best venue in college football, right here. And we get to do it with each other. Uh, and it's a team I love, a team that really loves each other. And and uh, there's football decisions that have to be made and things that we got to do better. But you know, the main thing is 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 you know just not growing weary. Uh, just keep growing stronger. And uh, if you do that. You know, we're going we're going to have a lot more good days than, than bad days. That's for sure. What are some of the stress points that Cunningham <clears throat> will do to a defense? You name it. Uh, you know, just last year he had he had what a 52 yard touchdown on a little influence zone read. Uh, you know, I mean, he gets on that sideline, he's gone. Uh, he he can he can rip it. You know, down the field, he can. He can dance around and create and extend, so you have to cover for forever, um, you know. So he's just and he's he's fearless. I mean, the the last year fourth and one, game could be over. He makes a throw. I still don't know how they made that. I watched it again. I still don't know how they made that play. Uh, I thought he was going to run it, and man, he just rears back on fourth and one and, and throws it right in between two people on the sideline, and his guy makes an unbelievable play on the two yard line, right? He's just a fearless kid, and so just got a lot of respect for him as a competitor. Uh, everything I know about him, he's a great, great young man. And uh, but he's, I mean, he's. You don't want to compare him to somebody, but he's he's like Lamar. I mean, he he can beat you in every every way possible. And just when you think you got him, he's he's gone. So. Really stresses how you play the quarterback, how you rush the quarterback, how you because obviously he's a huge part of their their run game, um, and, but yet he can he can absolutely, you know I mean they take a lot of shots. Opened up last week, shot. I mean they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna rip it. Um, a lot of misdirection, you know, and again just a, a very balanced team. So he stresses you every way you can be stressed, sideline to sideline, goal line to goal line. Um, he, he's a very, very good player. How much do you change your personnel for a QB who can extend a play? 
from from play to play? In other words, might you go with more of a nickel look? Yeah, we always you know have packages uh, that we that we carry every week and all year that you know depending on down a distance situation, uh, scoreboard, uh, who who the quarterback is. You know, we always have you know certain personnel groupings that. You know, we feel like we gotta we gotta have in the plan, but with a guy like this, you 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 better you better you better have plan A, B, and C. What was the hardest part of yesterday for your Just watching it, you know, uh, and taking ownership of it. Um, you know, because again, it's I mean, you're, you're just. You know, I mean, some basic things, some very basic things that we that we didn't do, but. You know, just just getting back going, just getting back going, picking himself up. The hardest thing is always getting back up, dusting yourself off. That's always the hardest thing, because uh, because you want to just kind of stay down, you know. So the hardest thing is just getting back up, and showing up, and let's let's put the tape on right here, and let's watch it as a family, and let's let's make sure we're all on the same page, and uh, so. It's always the hardest part when you have a loss. And again, we didn't have many losses around here, thank God. Uh, but you know, when we have, we've we've responded. You know, you can go back to we we kind of laid the foundation of the program here. You know, nine, ten, eleven, <clears throat> and um, and really kind of took another step in, in in twelve and thirteen, I think, and, and solidifying that. And then fourteen, we you know we we lost that South Carolina game. And then uh, uh, we came in here. Streeter came in. As a matter of fact, we, you know, we had the, the Oklahoma game, and I think we went on a you know, we went on a pretty good long run there. Maybe a 17-game winning streak there, and you know went all the way to the national championship game and uh, got beat. And then we came back 16 and ended up losing a the game. Then we go and win the national championship. It was really down. Well, that was a that was a dark Sunday. Uh, you know, gave up about 600 and something yards. Uh, it was a bad day. Uh, <clears throat> our best players, well, I mean, we got great players, guys, a bunch of guys playing on Sunday. It was, you know, they had a bad day. Uh, we're, we're, we're people. I am not perfect. Um, and, and there is no coach here perfect. There's no player here perfect. We're people. And, you know, you, you especially in competition, you can have, you can have some bad moments, but you can't let them define you, you know. There's a lot of people that do, and they don't. They don't. They don't get better. Um, but that team did and won it all. And then shoot, come back 17, have a good year, got beaten the playoff, and then I think we went on a 29 game winning streak. You know, and then we we back to back national championships, and then we, you know, we get back going again, and and now we're coming off a 14 game winning streak after a, a tough little stretch there in 21. So you know, you just you just keep learning, you keep growing, you're always building. Um, uh, you know, that's, that's, that's who we are. I mean, we've won two national championships in six years. Um, and, uh, man, you, you, you keep believing in what you do. You don't, you don't put your head in the sand. You keep getting better. Um, you, you, you know what reality and what's perception and, and you, you live in reality, um, in our world. So, and you're very truthful and transparent with, with your players and make sure everybody's on the right page and again the right perspective and, and you go back to work that's what you do you go back to work uh, that's what we've always done here and that's what we'll continue to do and um, be a lot more good days ahead <clears throat> physical part what differentiates this bad day from some of those pre- yeah yeah that's the most disappointing part because they just they physically beat us S- simple as that Tyler Davis said yesterday he thought it was a mindset yeah it's mindset mentality you know, I mean, Tyler played good. I thought he played pretty good. I thought Davis. I mean, you know, you know, you know that's the thing. You have a game like that, and you just like, you just, it's all bad. It's not all bad. Uh, I mean, Davis Allen had a great game. What a game! I mean, kid played his heart out. Had a great game. Tyler Davis played well. Um, but you know, as a football team, you, 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 we weren't anywhere near what we needed to be. And again, six turnovers in two games. You're lucky you're one and one instead of zero oh and two. Lance Taylor like as a player. He played for you there at Alabama. Yep. Your thoughts on him now as the OC? Yeah, I remember Lance. I first met Lance. He was probably, oh, man, he was probably 
14 maybe, 15, something like that. You know, his dad played at Alabama. And so back in those days uh, <clears throat> when I was there, we, we would – you know, we would the way we'd do camp would I think it was called Patey Hall. We'd all we'd set up for camp over at Patey Hall and you know, I was always a part of the check in process and all that stuff and, and so the first time I met him was when he, he came down to camp and we had him as a camper. Um, and then uh, and then he ended up walking on and he just a uh, he you know, every walk on that that makes it, they all have the same attributes and, and he exemplified those. I mean he was he was confident. He had talent. Uh, he was tough. He was an above and beyond guy. Great work ethic. Uh, you know, just a just a just a great person. And and so I had a chance. I think I was there with him one or two years. I can't remember. Maybe it was two. And then I and then I he so he redshirted. Maybe redshirt freshman year. And then I and then we got let go. So, uh, but it but I kept up with him. And uh, we've stayed in touch for years and years and years. He spent several years out with David Shaw at Stanford and. Um, and then uh, went over to the Panthers for a little bit. But I'm proud of him. He's done a great job and a really good football coach. And then obviously competed against him, you know, his time at Notre Dame as well. Uh, but he's, uh, he's, he's, he's one of the real good guys in the profession, for sure. <clears throat> yeah, but you saw Xavier Thomas up riding the stationary bike, and he had a very emotional post on social media apologizing to – Clemson Nation, just how is he feeling right now? He's good. I mean, he's been encouraging to me, actually. Uh, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm really, uh, you know, we don't always understand why things happen, but um, it, it's it's certainly disappointing. But, man, he is he is just a – I'm just really proud of who he is and just how mature he is, how he's grown. I mean, he, he is a – a transformed person from when I met him at 16 years of age to who he is right now as a man and, you know, getting ready to be married and just, just again, has, has a good perspective and life has a way of helping you, helping you have that. If you're, if you're wired the right way, he's, he's really grown in his faith. Uh, I mean, just tremendously. I think he's, he's really leaned on that. Um, but he's going to be fine. I mean, it's disappointing. It, it, you know, we're, we're always disappointed and things don't go the way we want them to go. But as a person of faith, God's, God's plan is always bigger than our plan. And it's not always – it doesn't always line up, right, the way, the way we plan it. And, uh, and so, you know, but he's going to be fine. It's not like he's dealing with, you know, a torn ACL. It's not like he's, he's got a situation like, you know, with Justin – uh, he's going to be fine. It just it just didn't work out the way you know everybody wanted it. And he tried, man. He tried. He he gave it all all he had, and uh, it just wasn't meant to be. And I mean, even how he got re-injured. I mean, I mean, he just. I mean, he literally like hurtled the back, uh, you know, on a Wednesday practice. Uh, you know, but that's just, you know. So the one thing I can say about X. Uh, he absolutely gave every ounce of everything he had, and uh, and he he really truly was was uh, you know doing everything he could, and just a setback, and between Dr. Martin and Dr. Anderson, uh, and and what's best for him, you know he, he could probably you know come back and and, and finish this thing out here, um, but then he's going to definitely have to have the surgery. And so that would, if he does go pro, it's going to, it's just, it's, it's not going to be good for him um, because he needs to be at his best. And uh, so it's just the best thing for him and, and where we are. And he gave it all he could, and that's all you can ask. And, and uh, so, you know, uh, we got to do what's best for him and get him in a good spot. And then, and then, he, and then he'll make a decision, you know, uh, I mean, because he's only 22. I mean, heck, you got guys playing in college football 25 right now, uh, you know, so. I think I think the quarterback of Tennessee is 25. I think there's a lot, especially with COVID. There's a bunch of 24 year olds playing in in college football. So he's still young. I mean, still all in front of him. And and uh, you know he's he does have an option. I mean, if he wanted to, he could come back. Um, I'd take him back uh, for sure. But you know he, he he can go on and go pro too. I don't have any doubt he'll get drafted. Uh, obviously he's missed out on a lot of opportunity and he in, in he in his mind he hasn't been able to really be the best version of himself but he gonna be fine no matter what uh, but I'm just I'm really proud of who he is 
the type of man that he has become, and it's all part of his journey. Uh, so uh, he's got a bright, bright future ahead of him uh, on and off the field. Uh, he's, got, he's got a lot more football to play, but he's got, a, he's got a lot of great things coming for him in life too. Is his option to return as simple as just having that year dangling, or is there an application of medical hardship? No, no. He, you know, everybody got a year, you know, except for the coaches. Uh, the coaches didn't get that, that for a year. Uh, the, the, you know, that clock didn't stop. Uh, you know, but, but for the players, uh, everybody, everybody, it's just like the year didn't happen, right? I mean, it just – it happened, but it didn't happen. You know, and so we're still as we're still kind of all processing that. You know, because you, you, how you got you got to manage your roster, it's it's, you, it's really impossible to manage your roster right now. Uh, you know, you do the best you can, but everybody's dealing with the same thing. What if everybody came back and said, "Hey, I want to come back"? Well, you know, it's just you got you got issues. Uh, so, and I think it'll go. What year is this? Uh, this is twenty. So this is class of twenty three. So I think. Uh, I think we got at least one more year of this, at least one more year, maybe two, maybe two. If you were a freshman in 21, it doesn't get that. But if you were a freshman in 20, yeah, that's right. Back, that's right. Get it, yeah. Yeah. So we, we still, 24. is it 24? Yeah. So we go to. Yeah. There you go, the Notre Dame guy, uh, the smart guy, figured it out right there. Uh, uh, so hey, speaking of, <laughs> speaking of. I am so offended, first of all. I've been with Tim Beret for 20 years, and I still, he still has not told me this, but he called my wife. He called my wife. And, and, am I okay with this? Yeah. Okay. Tim Beret, y'all know Kay, and this is why everything went crazy. I blame it all on Tim Beret because he proposed – at Notre Dame this weekend to Miss Kay and is going to be married. Uh, so, congratulations. Yeah, you waited till Sunday, but God knew it was going to happen. And, and I'm just telling you, uh, I knew something was off. I didn't know what it was. My dog died last week, 14 years. You know, buried my dog at 1030 at night on Wednesday night. Uh, my stepbrother passed away Saturday morning early. We've got his funeral this Thursday. He's been battling cancer. Uh, and then we got our butts handed to us Saturday night by, by Notre Dame. So it's it a tough week. But then I find out Tim Bray is getting – I mean, we've been after Tim Bray to get married for uh, – I mean, I guess he just finally gave up and said, well, if they if you know if he broke up with her, she's getting half everything he's got at this point anyway. So, uh, But he calls my wife and tells her, I, I still don't get a text. I get nothing. I don't get a text. I get nothing. So, but anyway, Kath, this. Kathleen would badger me more than anybody else. So she was one of the first. She, she was, I thought something terrible had happened. Because she goes, she goes, you are not going to believe this. And I went, what? Tim is engaged. And I'm like. What? This was Sunday night. You know, I really, I really, really wasn't in a celebratory mode, mood. But anyway, she was so excited to tell me that. And and uh, congratulations, man. And I, I can't wait to see Kay to give her a big hug. And I'm, I'm super, super, super happy uh, for y'all. Talking about a great couple. Uh, and she's a Gamecock. Uh, you know, so, you know, this is a complicated. Maybe that's why it took so long. I don't know. But she's she's come around and she's a. She's a good one. She cries on Clemson Senior Day. She and she has become a great friend, and is she loves the Gamecocks, but she she does pull for the Clemson Tigers. So, uh, so anyway, so when's the when's the wedding day? Well, uh, hadn't figured that out yet. This is all happening. But she said yes, and I should ask she that. Yes. She said yes. I love it. Divorce statistics. Uh, statistics. I, I don't uh, think so. Oh yeah. <laughs> Okay, I got you. I got you. I don't think so. But, man, that's a really, really cool, man. I, that, I forgot all about that. I just seeing him over there. But, yeah, so, anyway, managing the roster is a, is a challenge. But it's just a free year. There's no – there's no. you just say, I'm coming back. That's all you got to do. I think Jake Brink still has a one catch in the last four games. Because you're always yep. trying to get DJ going. How much do you think Jake might need to be – 
Yeah, I mean, it just, you know, and sometimes substitutions and things. You know, Davidson on the flip, on the flip side has had some big games, right? Uh, so he's, he's a senior, and, and he's earned that opportunity, and he's taken full advantage of it. Uh, and then there's been, some, there's been other times where Jake's had plenty of opportunity, but just ball hadn't come his way. Uh, or, you know, he's, you know, maybe, maybe uh, didn't do something he needed to do, but uh, he'll, be, he'll be fine. Definitely need to get him going more. Bo Collins looked like he got shaken up through the night. Is there an update on? Yeah, him? he separated his shoulder, so he's out. Uh, just you know, it'd be be kind of week to week until we you know, work him through that. See where he's at next week. I don't know. Is that the same shoulder from Paul Camp? Uh, it is. Uh, I, uh, it's this shoulder. You know, I'm not sure. Honestly, uh, not 100 percent on that. For some reason, I think it's the other one. Is uh, Kobe Pace back in practice? He, he, he's working back in a little bit yesterday. So again, today is, and tomorrow will be big days for him to kind of just see where he is as we get into a little bit of competitive work. Today and tomorrow will be, be huge, big for him. But he did a lot last week. They really pushed him hard. So you know, the goal this week was to work him back into practice and kind of see where he is from there. Not sure. He was out yesterday. Uh, he's battling an ankle as well. So, you know, we'll see. I think the pitcher is such a, a positive coach and would never <clears throat> throw a player or another coach under the bus. <laughs> Some of those loudest voices out there say, well, he just doesn't understand. He doesn't understand the issues. And he doesn't do that. But I, I would imagine that behind closed doors, there's been some hard coaching with the assistant coaches. or with the players. Uh, do you think that sometimes people just don't grasp So who's it? who's saying I don't understand the issues? I'm some of the loudest uh, ones. You know, the people that... <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, I, I can't, I can't, I can't waste an ounce of brain power uh, speaking to those people. Uh, I really can't, you know. I mean, I, I know what our issues are. Uh, been doing this a long time. And uh, again, we, we, how many, how many programs have won two national championships in six years? How many? I don't, I don't know. How many, how many done that? I mean, there ain't many out there. Uh, again, it's, you know, it's just, uh, it's just kind of, and, and nobody's got their head in the sand. There's, we got, we got, we all want to be better in a lot of areas, and we're going to be. But there's, I'm very well aware of every issue that that we have. And uh, but also know who we are and what we're all about, and uh, what this program is built on. And and um, I don't I don't I don't flinch when it comes to uh, I, I'm led by my faith and what what's right in my spirit. And uh, when when it's time for me to change something or or whatever, it's usually you know spirit led and uh, not internet led or fan led or anything like that that's uh, I wouldn't be standing here in front of you if I was driven by that type of stuff any questions for coach from zoom hey yeah, no, this is Davis from the Clemson Insider um, I guess nine games into this thing now what would you say the identity of this offense is uh, what is the identity of this offense? Uh, well, up until two games ago, it was an offense that was really, really good on third down, and we're still good on third down. It was an offense that was uh, taking care of the football, an offense that was, uh, you know, scoring, uh, had some explosiveness built into it, uh, scored, led the nation in red zone scoring until two games ago, and we're still, I think, top five uh, in the in the country. So, uh, all of those things. And but you know again we we gotta we gotta get back to to doing what we need to do. We're we're built uh, to run the football, and uh, and then build off of that. Uh, I think that we've been able to do that. Uh, so, and we've responded, you know, in all situations outside again uh, this past game. Yeah, but when, when Tyler Davis says that he didn't feel like the defense had the right mindset and didn't show up with the right mindset just what do you feel like led to that any reason for that um you know coming off a bye going into a big game yeah about. yeah i really wish i could tell you uh you know sometimes as a coach as i said yesterday you 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 can see certain things you know you maybe have a bad game and you look back and you say yeah well there you go you know we 
It's, it's what I was talking about last week in practice and this, this, and that. But uh, this isn't the case. We had a, we had really, really good preparation. I, I thought the guys uh, were in a good place. But all I can tell you is you're dealing with, with people and, uh, you know, especially young people. And, you know, we're not immune to a bad day. And uh, we, we definitely had that. But the mentality defensively wasn't anywhere what it needed to be. And, uh, you know, we've had other days like that over my tenure here. But that was uh, – you don't ever like it when you, when you deal with that. But it's on everyone to show up with the right mentality. You know, this isn't – this ain't middle school. Everybody, this is everybody's. Everybody's got a job to do.